Welcome to another episode of the Pink Lady Against Scammers. Well, hello, everybody. I am so excited. I have a wonderful lady from Texas, and her name is Lexi. And she has a scam story to tell us. But first, she's going to tell you a little bit about your, herself. So, Lexi, welcome. Hi, Fancy. How are you doing? Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I am originally from Los Angeles, California. Um, currently lived in currently lived in Texas. Um, um, after my time in the military, I um, was in the Army seven years. Um, best opportunity ever. Grateful for it. It helped me. It helped me birth into adulthood. <laughs> um, after the Army, I decided to stay in Texas. I currently live in San Antonio, which is a great city that's full of history and a lot of food and sea world um other than that um just love um well love food sex pick except pig feet <laughs> um also i'm not trying to have foods i take road trips um I write books, write poems. I podcast myself. Awesome. Um, other than that, I'm just just trying to enjoy life mentally one day at a time. Uh -huh. I'm 42 years old. Not ashamed to tell my age. And um, and so I'm just grateful for the um, opportunity to tell the story. Very cool. Very great. Well, at the very end, I'm going to have you plug your podcast, okay? So, okay. you know, yes, that's what I do with everybody. So yes, tell us your romance scam story. Wow. Um, it actually started in 2007. Um, I had um, let go of someone and it was kind of like on and off. And so I was already in a fragile state because I want somebody to support be there for me and not be disappointed if I don't get a certain job. And so I met the scammer through Black Planet. And uh, those who remember Black, Black Planet, it was a, it's, it's still a website for us folks, but other people are welcome. And so I um, got a response to some guy, and you know, I'm thinking, okay, he's cute. I think myself, move on from this next guy that just just didn't care, treat me like trash, like find, find somebody better. So we're continuing, and I see photos. And we just talk, to talk, chit chat, and talking back and forth. Um, we even reached outside Yahoo, and I was just they would just get attention. Somebody that understood me, someone that was there for me because I really needed that emotional support because I really was um, when I got an army, I had a bad landing, especially financially and mentally. It was just a, I just needed a girding. And so um, as time started going on, the lovey doveys and then. He was like, and you know, can you pick up some money and send it to so so? At the time, I was like, I do anything because uh, I think I was told, I think I was dumb because I did do something. I guess I want to prove to the guy that hey, I'm there. I'm like, I got your back, ride or die. This went on for some months, and um, he had said he was coming. And I'm thinking, okay, he's coming to see me if I get the minimum person. And I had a feeling something was not right because I didn't get no plane, airline, from air, his flight information, flight ticket information. I didn't get nothing. And I think he told me he was an artist. And so when the day came that he didn't show up, I'm thinking, okay, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was not right. By the time I was just like, oh, lovey dub. I'm like, okay, I got attention, da da da. So. Time went on. I kept doing the um, money, the, the like pick up money and send it out. I kept doing it for a while. And um, one of the times I was um, sending money out, somebody asked, Is this a like criminal? Act? This sense like some criminal activity. And I think myself, nah, I'm like, nah. I'm, I'm thinking nothing. I'm thinking like, nah. It didn't click to me like it, it was. I was asked too many times to send money to pick it up and then send money to somebody else. It didn't click. And so as time went on, and this went on for almost two years, I um, had a feeling like, Lex, you need to get out of this relationship. But I didn't want to because I got tired of being alone. And I was already 
try to cover for one relationship and then have to like cover again. I was just like, I was like, no. And I was fighting hard. And so um, another conversation I had and somebody was kind of like a moderator was like, they said it was a fraudulent activity. I said, back my like, no, this can't be. But I didn't say no. I was like, nope, just shake it off. <laughs> and so the roommate I was staying with, I told her what was going on. She was like, no, nah, something ain't right. I'm still fighting this. Like, no, no, like, no, this man loved me, da, da, da. But I knew back in my mind they were telling the truth, but I didn't want to be alone. And so. That's normal. Um, in definitely. all scam stuff, you know, they mm -hmm. they really draw you in and mm -hmm. you just can't mm -hmm. live without them. So what you mm -hmm. went through was normal, you know. Yes, yes ma'am. And so I um I was talking to one guy one time and it's amazing about international friendship. How I don't know. It just I don't know what about international friendship. I don't know what it is. And he has said to go to a certain website and at the time I didn't didn't go to it. And one day I was just like, let me go to this website. I think it was called Romantic Scam List or something like that. It had a list of all these scammers. And I decide to go to it and I see the picture of the guy. I didn't want to believe it, but I knew it was the truth. And once I found out he lied and I found out he was a scanner, he was not who he said he was, and he was not white, I said to myself, okay, Alexia, start researching now. So I went through Facebook. I was trying to find anything about this person. And then on the other half, I decided to report, do a report, let know, hey, this was what's going on. Um, thankfully, um, I got spared. Thank you, Jesus, by the grace of God, because uh, God only what would have happened if I really got caught up in it. Um, not too long after that, um, I had a friend who I went to high school with. She had linked up with him, too. And I was like, nah, -uh, no, you're not going to go through this. So I told her what happened, and she um, also cut him off. And he had tried to get back, trying to link back with me again. And this time for jewelry, I was like, no, I'm not doing this again. Because one, I trusted him. <laughs> and I mean, I was getting my all into this relationship. I was bragging about the relationship. And I was bitter about it. And I was like, why? I'm like, what is going on with me? And I found out later on he was a um, he was in Miami, and I think it was somewhere else. But he had a cell phone number that was an African cell phone number, so he could have been anywhere. And so um, I did read him from again. I blocked him at all cost. Um, I will say it has helped me learn a lot because there have been times where I've had. People, not Facebook, um, Instagram, especially Instagram. Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I had to put of how many, if I had to put of how, what the most people I blocked at, I will have to say Instagram because I would get the compliments. And I thank for the compliment, but I think to myself, this guy any more than this. Like, oh, like they're like, oh, like your picture. I'm like, hey, what's the real reason why you say hi to me? What's the real reason? And so what I will do is I will ask, like, you know, do you have a Facebook account or other social media accounts? They were like, no. I'm like, that's kind of not normal. You at least got you at least got have Facebook, at least a Facebook account, at least. And so there are times they were like, you know, can we talk on WhatsApp? And I will say this, I don't do this all the time, but I'll kind of figure a pattern. I like know something right. Um, there are times I'll say, um, can you prove to who you really are? Because I'll see the pictures of different um different people. And I will call, I will like either call me or I'll call the person. And I think the most recent one I can remember was the fact that this guy, I think it was a I think a photo of a doctor in the background was kind of unsure. And all of a sudden, I saw the, it was like dark, 
I saw a computer screen, but I didn't see his face. So I knew he was lying. And so I backed off that one. And then another one, he was talking like, it was like, you know, you get those pre-recorded looks, videos. And someone was like screaming, like, Alexia, cut this dude off. He's not real. And so I ended up doing a background check of that guy. And I think with some, some actor in Africa, something like that. And I found out he kind of, um, what's I looking for? He don't like real sweets. And that's the nicest way I'm going to say it. <laughs> I got it. That's the first time way. I heard it. Trust me. That's the nicest <laughs> way I'm going to say it. The nicest way. And so, um, but I will say though, um, even though I don't like what happened, it did help. It did help me later on because it gave me kind of a, a, well, a checklist of what to look for in a person. And when it gave me a comment, I'm like, okay, what's your attention? Do you have an account? Do you have an email address? Do you have a website? Because you could be saying all these lovely, lovely things, but if you are just kind of vaguely saying it just to get what you want, it's kind of like saying, okay, you really don't want me. And so I will say there was another incident where um, I had a funny feeling it was, this person was not legit. And I was like, it was just better, you know, to cut all tides and there was a threat of harm towards me and when that rose up i was like uh i really gotta cut this person off hmm? and yeah. and what's kind of sad is that it was just from different different people i mean something just too good to be true um the i think some military some say i'm a widow is I'm like y'all just desperate and the military thing is a big thing yeah pretending to be in the military uh, and i'm i'm i ain't gonna lie i was gonna ask like what badge did you get what unit was you in where you stationed at i i was, I was going to some questions i was going to ask some questions yes but i will say though um it really maybe not want to do long destination that much um and I will say it definitely had kind of like, kind of, eh. I was kind of, I ain't allowed done. And when I was, I was done because I was, I was tired of being hurt. I was very tired. And I'm going, oh, oh we're going to take so much. Yes. <laughs> but um, I had to learn to forgive. I had to really forgive myself and forgive him. Um, I don't know what happened to him. I have no idea. But I think there was a photo of him that he was with a woman that he was married. Um, but I will say, though, it definitely, I think it, it hurt me, but I think for me, it bothers me when I hear stories of people being taken advantage of, and I'm like, why are you doing this? And I have heard stories where other people was caught up in the same thing I was, and some results did not turn out turn out well. But um, I think it's a hard cry for not just those that were hurt, but those that that did do I'm like why would you do this to someone like what's like who hurt you what made you think it's okay that you're not concerned the consequences the emotional consequences of a person it really made me concerned but um I'm grateful for me that I um moved on from it mentally moved on from it um I actually think I, I want to say I wrote in one of my books about it. <laughs> but um, other than that, though, I was just glad it made it through because um, if they say naiveness, in a way, yes. But I will say um, if, there, if I had to choose between which one was worse, being scammed, it is something that would never go for me or being cheated on. I will say they're both time first place because the level of pain, the level of sacrifice, the level of hurt, the betrayal, deception is just, uh, mm -mm. I wouldn't wish that for my own enemies. And, <sighs> <laughs> well, you know, the one thing we I always talk about 
on my lives, um, I always tell everybody, well, first off, you're in a safe space. I yes, won't yeah. put up with nonsense in there. Um, yes, yeah. But, um, you know, because we, we go through like the red flags and all kinds of stuff, yeah. you know, we have a good time too. We do dance parties and other stuff, but really? um, yeah, I have my Spotify open and, you know, so, uh -huh. um, so uh, I always tell the ones, okay, if you've been scammed, okay, you know the game. Mm -hmm. help others so that they don't fall for it because you're the perfect example right. of, Hey, this happened to me. I can tell you right now, you know, the yeah. hard thing is, and I get asked this a lot. I don't have a surefire answer. I don't mm -hmm. know if anybody does. It's like, how do you convince them that, that you know, and you, you don't want to hear it. And I get it because they do go after vulnerable women. Mm -hmm. I don't like the word gullible, but that's, you know, naive. It's all those, you know, older women, um, mm -hmm. chubby women, um, Whoa. you know, Perfect. and um, yeah. are ones who look like they might be lonely. I laugh when I say that. If you're, I don't use look yeah. like this in my picture. I'm oh, a little younger, girl. brown hair. Um, oh, girl, right. <laughs> but, uh, but you are right about Instagram. I have two accounts on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I have my Suzanne Sugarbaker account which is the one that talks to, yeah, from Designing Women, that talks to the guys. And then I have one for my, all of this, you know, I have two accounts, but you are right. It's all over Instagram and it's fake celebrities. And it's, and it is, it's sad. It really is. And I make the joke all the time. The sweet talk will give you a cavity. I mean, <laughs> it's just so bad. And I'm sitting here to myself <laughs> laughing and I'm just like, oh my, you know, and I keep some of the scammer sweet talk because like on some of my um, podcasts, I end with like, you know, a little humor. I'll read that to some romantic music. And then I found a book in the 50 cent bin last year. It says a thousand and one ways to meet Mr. Right. And oh I read God. a couple of those because I think it's hilarious, you know, um, oh oh you know, God. but um, I did have one question. Yes, ma'am. And the, we kind of talked about it. Do you have any advice on how to convince someone who's being scammed that they're being scammed? I'll say background check. Yeah. And um, ask questions, especially if you have an inkling that something's not right. Please don't ignore it because I knew something wasn't right. Excuse me. And I actually ignored the sound. That's, that's not saying the sound, the sign. I ignored the evidence. I ignored it. And I ignored it all because of I didn't want to be alone. So if I had to give with to anyone, not even women, but even men, because I heard men got scammed bad. Oh my god! I have a guy on my TikTok, uh, Wayne. Oh, He's he was huh. scammed. Wow. Yeah. My encouragement to you is to not ignore the uh, prompting, especially with somebody saying kind of like more than once, "Hey, you need to cut this person off." Yeah. Because um, the red it, flags. Yes, please do not ignore it. If somebody saying more than once to you, it's a sign. Hey, you need this is not this is not healthy for you. Yeah. Um, but also will say, um, kind of ask yourself like, how do you feel? Out like it's like this is one one thing that I've done, and actually I'm glad this method I learned this method was I think it's called cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's kind of like right now, okay, how do you feel with this person? And right now, all these feelings. But the question is, another question would be like, hey, when you're with this person, are you at peace? Or are you not, or are you, it's like something just not settling in you. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll say ask questions. Um, research Google. I don't care if you're a prior, prior investigator. Be thoroughly sure because you, you know what I'm saying? It's too good to be true. And I usually tell them, go with your gut feeling. If your gut's telling you, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to your heart. Listen to your gut first. <laughs> oh, and, and here's one. Here's one. Also, one good thing I have learned: when you got a dream about it, that's really a big sign. And I and now I, I'm gonna tell you why because um and this wasn't a scammer. Well, he was definitely well. He was a cheating. He was a stupid, straight up cheating one. Cheat, cheating one. I had a dream. Actually, a couple of dreams where it was like. Give the side this person cheating on you. I was like, cheating? What? This ain't normal. And then another dream was like, I saw a photo, a family photo of the guy that I was with 
a lady and his kids. I was like, okay, look, you gotta let this person go for real now. And the fun thing, I knew he was cheating. Yeah, I knew it, but I didn't want to believe it. But um, I say, look, if you're not, if you're not, you're not at peace with this person, definitely find out what's going on. And even though it may feel a tearing because you may have connected emotionally or soulishly, I, it's better to separate from something that ain't good for you than to cling to something that's trying to, I hate to say the word kill, because I had to learn that hard way and it took a hobby to recover. But I also was even say that just because a person with her by a scammer does not mean not all people are like that. There is someone out there for that person who will not treat them like this. Um, may take <laughs> time to you know recover, heal, and trust again. But um, I'll say, you know, just take your time. Don't be in a hurry to get in a relationship. Don't be in a hurry. Um, and also just say, just um, just don't, it's, I don't have other words to put this. Just be okay. That is okay. That even though it sucks what happened, it will always be like it. And that there is somebody that wants you for you and not just for selfish reasons. Right. Right. Can I ask, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but no, can no, no. I ask how much money you actually in total ended up sending him? <sighs> Shockingly, not a lot. Oh, good. <laughs> and that's the one that I can say I, I did not send a lot of money. My own personal money to him, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe 200 tops? Maybe 200. That's good. Yeah, that girl, woof, child. Yeah, compared to <laughs> other <laughs> stories I've seen. <laughs> oh, my God. I am grateful that I did not spend a lot of money on him because uh, God knows, woof, God knows how I was blessing the phone folks. But that's the one that I can't say I didn't spend a lot of money on him. And But I'll even say that one time I think I needed a new phone or something. And he was like, no, take some of the money and just use it. I'm like, okay, thanks. And um, he didn't ask for a receipt or anything. So that was the blessing of the silks. I didn't use like, them like that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was just, um, I, I don't know who other money was he, that was being used for whatever cause it was. But um, that's one that I can't say. It wasn't a lot of money. So I'm grateful. Well, that's that. good. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You're one of the lucky ones. And Ooh. you seem like you come out of this even stronger. And smarter. Mm -hmm. You know, we all, you know, I like to say, I've just, I look back on my past. I'm like, well, I like to think I'd learned something from mm -hmm. any mistakes or, you know, I'm divorced yeah. and, and oh. I learned, I, oh no, it's fine. I've been divorced a long time. <laughs> I, but I've raised my daughter practically on my own. She's 23. But yeah. I look back in that and I might not be in this fantastic place that I am right now. Maybe if that didn't happen as uh -huh. much as I can't stand thinking about it. Um, uh -huh. But it's like, I might not be doing what I'm doing. I might be doing something else or doing nothing, you know, uh -huh. where this has become my passion project the last couple of years, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't agree with that because um, even though I had, even when um, the little submit, like submit form to be on a podcast, um, one of the things, um, and I'm a believer, I'm not perfect by long shot. I am not perfect by long shot. Um. Let us say all things were worth it for good. And whatever meant for evil got turned for good. And even though it sucks being scammed, it sucks going through divorce, it bursts something in you to help others. And I'm honest with you, I never ever heard a podcast like this before till I saw the um the list of podcasts. And you were you were one of them. Because um I think a lot of people need to hear this. Because I think it's it's talked about a little more now. Uh, whether they had the Ponzi schemes, all that stuff. I think recently a woman scammed a man out of a lot of money. I think he was a, I think he, he was an elderly man. Yeah. And and I think and I'm actually I think I'm grateful that you're doing this because it needs to be told. And also not to let it's not only to let it not only helps people escape that type of stuff, but also help people know that hey. We know what you're doing. We know what your plot is. We find out we're going to bust you out. 
And you know how to say, I tell people, tell kids, don't say the word snitch. I will say snitch in a heartbeat. I'll say snitch in in two seconds. Snitch, I'll snitch. <laughs> well, <laughs> I will snitch. You know, there's a couple people I partner with on TikTok because we're mm -hmm. all kind of doing the same thing. And I'm going to send you those people's names so you can follow them. Uh, mm -hmm. The one is Coastal Cowboy 79. He lives in, I think, North Carolina. Oh my he kind of does more of uh, the women who come at him to scam. But oh, he also, he, oh, and he's a hoot. He is just one of my best best ones on there and i mean he has more access to stuff you know where oh, he can find yeah. out stuff um mm -hmm. and then but he comes on my lives and oh. uh we just we go back and forth it's so fantastic wow there's yvette um i oh. think she's called IB princess she oh. posts some great videos she comes in my lives oh. um but it's like we were talking last Saturday. It's like we need to, what more can we do? Because uh -huh. like working together and mm -hmm. um, there's a flyer on the Advocating Against Roman Romance Scammers website. That's uh -huh. fantastic. It's uh -huh. actually, I only interested in the one page. It's stuff to look for and that, mm -hmm. you know, red flags and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And my, my, the one thing I tell my followers is, look, you can either get it on my website or I'll email it to you. Um, uh -huh. I have that and another card. These both came from that same site. I said, you know, print them out, go to your elderly relatives, go to your neighbors, uh -huh. um, go over there, take a cup of coffee and, uh, <laughs> and um, just sit and say, go over this with them. And then mm -hmm. if you ever have any questions, you know, ask me, don't ever give out any of this information, you know, and, yeah, no. and then like when I was in church Saturday night, it's so funny. I carry a notebook with me because that's when I get all my, my lot of ideas in church. Oh, and I thought, I thought, oh my gosh, at the church, I'm Catholic at the church I go to, it's mostly elderly. Oh, okay. And I was thinking, oh my God, I could ask, you know, Father Jim, hey, do you mind if I put these flyers in the back of church yeah, and yeah. maybe go to the food pantry? Hey, can I give you these flyers to have out? And yeah. then I thought, oh man, there's a bunch of other churches. I could, I'll print it all out. I got a laser printer. Uh -huh. And then um, like some senior homes that uh -huh. are still live on their own, but you know, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, gosh, I, you know, we just, so we want to try to expand it. And I, I kind of told people, um, I got to do that video still. I told them I would do a video. I said, you know, you guys are always giving me homework. I got to see what I can find out about people. Do, are they in my database that I created and all kinds of stuff. I'm uh -huh. going to give you homework. Now you take these papers, I'll, uh -huh. you know, email it to you, you print it and go, do something like that you know yeah. and then cowboy goes so i sent him the paper he goes let's see if we can make this even better and i'm like sounds good to me so we're trying yeah. but i mean the group has all just come together so marvelously and we're okay. all doing you know um and like i said cowboy and i have just become the best buds on here because uh yeah. we just work well together um one of my videos and they're crazy Oh, um, they're, but they're fun <laughs> but uh -huh. i'm talking to a scammer he was pretending to be chris evans who i'm a huge fan of oh, and geez. so um i got him to audio you know i recorded it and i just yeah. pulled out the godfather in me and started talking in the new york accent and i said stuff like uh now look i just bought the territory you work for me now i get a 25 percent, and i'm going through this whole yeah, thing and he's the entire time but i'm chris evans i'm chris evans mm -hmm. so now i use signs in my stuff to show and so my i have a sign that says i'm the boss and that's what i put on the back of my shirts now that i give out because i told everybody you're the boss too now mm -hmm. cowboy made a sign and did a tagged my video and he goes i'm the underboss and um i mean that's just the kind of relationship we've developed on here um we're all we all have a good time but we're all trying to get the point across of hey this is what's going on you know you, and the funny thing you said um we said um they got to say, oh, I'm Chris Evans I'm Chris Evans that's a straight flag sign straight oh up oh my god well first yeah. off Chris yeah. Evans does not contact you privately and actually several months ago before he went off social media for the summer for a while um uh -huh. he posted twice on his twitter account this is my only account i have i have uh -huh. an instagram account if somebody sends you a message it's not me you know mm -hmm. but yeah. i mean i get a ton of other celebrities like i just sunday was it i went and just 
went on Instagram under my Suzanne account and, uh-huh. um, you know, went to uh, some Chris Evan fan pages and, oh, love you. Went to uh-huh. Jeremy Renner. Oh, love you. Went uh-huh. to, who was the other one? Well, Jesus, by yesterday, I was getting, wait, today's Monday. I'm sorry. So, and so I'm getting all these messages from all uh-huh. of these guys saying, oh, I saw your post on my, you know, that's how they find you. For uh-huh. me on Instagram, it's like they follow me and then I'll follow them back. And then that's uh-huh. when the conversation begins. And you know, the funny thing is that I will, um, sometimes I don't, I don't try to follow the, all the guys that comments me and stuff like that. And I don't I would just see how many other women they're following because there'd be a list of yes. But yes. but um but you know what though I do agree. What don't I think it's the same? We don't kill Mitch is stronger. And um, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't know if I can. I might want to send you something because um, I don't like to go through divorce. I don't like what to go through, but I know what it's like to be let's say child a child from a divorce. <laughs> Yeah. And I know the effect is like no joke, especially when you like like you like what's going on. And so um I will say I do have um there's two books. I wanna say one or two. I, I, I'm sorry, there's just so many suddenly it's like <laughs> um, I feel it. I understand completely. <laughs> yeah, but um I just um I just give kudos to those who've been in divorce and even raising children by themselves. I know it's not an easy task. It's not easy at all. My mom and, and I- dad helped a lot. My sister and mm-hmm. brother helped a lot. Cause what mm-hmm. happened was um, he left me and my daughter was just a year oh. and a half old, oh, but yeah. I got to tell you, I wasn't upset about that. I was mm-hmm. upset because I had to put my daughter in daycare and I had to find a job. Finding the job was fine, but uh-huh. she and I were just together all the time. Uh-huh. And so, but putting her in daycare was the best thing because then she socialized with other kids. And uh-huh. as my mom said, she ate healthier. She got different foods. You know, I love my mom. She's, she was awesome. And, yeah, yeah. um, but she was, she, my daughter's grown very close and we just had a discussion a couple of weeks ago. She was talking about one of her friends, uh-huh. guy she's dating. He's an idiot. <laughs> and she goes, you know, she goes, mom, you, and, and I got to say, my girl is just really, really smart. And she, she, you know, she even says her friends are, it, you know, she, and she goes, mom, do you know the, the difference? Do you know why she's going through that? Uh-huh. And she goes, it's because she wasn't loved. She goes, I was loved. I was lot loved. And she goes, that's what makes me. And I tell you, I just wanted to ball because I'm like, oh my God, I did her. And she's very, thinks about all, you know, and. She sees her friend going through this stuff with the guy. She goes, I keep telling him he doesn't, he doesn't talk to her right and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, but she kept saying, mom, I had a lot of love and she didn't get that growing up. She goes, that's why I'm together, you know? Well, so that is something. Yeah. I think, you know, I kind of wonder now with scammers, why they would be something that they're not to get what they want. And I kind of wonder if there's some lack of like a, like an insecurity or they're trying to get something or they feel like, well, if I say I'm this, then I'll be wanted, then I'll be valued, then I'll be recognized. And some is not, some not always is for mental, emotional reasons. Some is for criminal reasons. But I think when a lot of scammers do what they do, I think to myself, there's a reason you just don't, I think some, a scam just don't do that overnight. Something happened and they yeah. built from it and they never really got the healing from it mm-hmm. and it don't and i would say it doesn't excuse scammers because wrong is wrong right but when somebody decides to take advantage of someone that much it says a lot about the about their about who they are about their character their posture towards individuals but even about themselves so mm-hmm. um so i thank for this podcast um i was able to check i was able to check out the um the list. I ain't gonna lie. I got. I got. I got. I got. I got to take my time to do that list. You, you had a list, girl. You had a good list. But you know what? Though I'm glad you did that because I know it's gonna help a lot of people. But I also think that this is. You know how they say. You know, plant the seed. Plant the seed. And even though, excuse me, people with there, no, I'm good. Ain't gonna need this. There's gonna come a point in their life like you know what? I need to go through that list. 
or they with some they may know somebody and say hey they are showing this list they show this resource because mm-hmm. it may help it could help them out and save them a lot of trouble so i thank you for doing that because that helped me too and just in case you know something going on I'm like look i got this resource that i go show you show look i like brag about it if i can share it on facebook <laughs> i share it on facebook thank you i appreciate that well tiktok has just also I get ladies who who message me. She goes, God, I wish I would have met you a year ago. I wish I would have, you know, so many, yeah, so many of them. And the comments are all just, as I always say, I get verklempt, you know, and um, I mean, they're just such sweet. And, you know, my videos are meant to be funny, but also educational. Because yeah, I played no, I like- full. I the one I video I just put up on Sunday. It's a two parter because it was so long. Uh-huh. I wore a blonde wig. It was one I wore for Halloween in the nineties when I was playing uh-huh. Garth from Wayne's World and the glasses. And I was talking in the worst Southern accent you could ever. But this guy was just you know. I sometimes I just play along with him. Other times I come in. Look, you're a scammer. Give me a break. You know. Oh, oh no. but I mean, the wig was because I never show my face on the vi- the video chats. They uh-huh. look at the ceiling, and if they insist on seeing it, I pull out the old Jason mask. Well, Sunday, I decided I'm going to put on a wig and wear those glasses, you know, because you really can't oh. see all. Oh my God, it was. He's, I look a mess. Okay, it's I'm not meant to be attractive in it, but. He kept saying how beautiful I was, and I'm just like, "Oh my God, dude, are you really looking at me?" You know? <laughs> Maybe he likes uh, blonde wigs that are just—I mean, it looked like I rolled out of bed, you know. Oh, oh, oh girl, girl, look! Don't forget, look, look, look. Uh, if you can look close to my hair, look. I got to take these. I need a whole new set of hair. Get a perm relax on my hair, girl. It's okay. It's understandable. It's understandable. Yeah, but I don't show myself normally, but I thought, well, the wig and the Wayne Garth glasses, that'll be okay. Actually, I wore my other reading glasses. I Pink is my thing, but I have like a blue pair. And so mm-hmm. I use those instead of my pink. And he's like, oh, your glasses are so beautiful. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. But, um, but for me, learning in school, making it humorous was a lot easier for me to learn. And so mm-hmm. that's kind of the videos, the audio stuff just started like, three years ago it was just they would call and I would be like oh I'm too scared and I don't know one day I was like oh, let's see what happens you know but like I said I never show myself but the wig mm-hmm. I'm gonna do that again except that wig is so hot <laughs> girl, girl, I have a wig I have a wig I really use but that going it come in handy yes yes so now you said you have a podcast please mm-hmm. brag about it well, the name of the podcast is called Eagle of Encouragement, where it's all about encouraging the people. Um, it's not just for believers, but, but just for anybody need encouragement, whether um, music, um, I sometimes read um, excerpts from my books, um, interviews with different individuals. Um, it's just about encouraging people because we all need it. Myself still need it to this day. But um, and, and here's the funny thing. Um, I always want to do radio. And... All my coworkers was like, you need to do a podcast. I went down like, I'm doing grad school, all this stuff. I got to do no podcast. And for some reason, I started praying about it. So I just started brewing. I was like, okay, Lexi, you probably need to do a podcast then. And so um, I'm amazed how much I'm done. And even though I think it was just for the books, it's really came more just about the book. It's just about cursing people. So, um, I get kick out of it. I really do because um, it's even though I may not always meet the listeners that listen to the podcast, I know very much it's people are are, are listening to it in. So um, I love it. I'm about to do my third season um, start next month, September, y'all. All right. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm grateful. Just it's just all about the, my attention, my writing is all about encouraging people because we all need it, no matter. That sounds great. No matter, it sounds great. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it doesn't matter color, social class, financial class, titles. It don't matter. You need encouragement. I, yes. I'm the place for it. Yes. Ah. Uh. You are awesome. Your story was mm-hmm. awesome. And all the stuff that you're doing with your podcast, I want to mm-hmm. advertise your podcast. So send me 
email me the link and stuff so I can talk about it on my next live, you know, because you um, like you I said, it. on TikTok, we all promote each other, you know, mm -hmm. um, every now at the end of one of Cowboys videos, he goes, now go check out my friend, the pink lady. And, uh, you know, so we mm -hmm. all help each other because we're all in the same goal. So, um, so Just please send it to me and I'll give you a boost every uh, episode, every time I go on. So I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I thank you for just re just doing this podcast because um, not a lot of people knew about this. And so when I saw, I was like, no, I'll go ahead and tell my story. And um, yeah. I thank you. And I thank you. This is not, you know, my podcast is made by encouraging people. I thank you for doing this podcast because it encourages a lot of people too in a lot of areas that most people may not have considered. So thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Be sure to check out Lexi's podcast. She talked about it on there and some books that she has out. Um, please check it out. Uh, I'm so glad she could come on here and tell her story. So that's all for today's show. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, also, be sure to follow me on TikTok. I do lives on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and on Saturdays at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we get a lot of fun folks that come in, my regulars, uh, Coastal Cowboy 79, who's awesome, and the Cat Lady, and a whole bunch of other fun people. So be sure to tune in, and, uh, you know, we talk scammers, we talk all kinds of ideas, how we can continue to combat them, and uh, we also have some good laughs in there. Um, we play music sometimes and have a little dance party. So be sure to check it out. So that's uh, TikTok, Pink Lady Against Scammers. Follow me. See my videos. Um, we just have a good time. So uh, take care. And remember, they don't love you. They love your money. Be safe.